testing. Testing, testing. Cool, cool. All right. Hello, everyone. It's been a hot minute. I think, um, I think the last time I was on was a couple weeks ago, and it was just uh, trying to catch up on my creature challenge. Because um, if if you know me, I, I'm really serious about and about my uh, creature challenge for the month of October. Every every single day for 30 days, I make a creature and. It actually, sometimes I want it to take like half an hour or 45 minutes, but now it usually takes a while. It takes maybe a couple hours, so it builds up gradually. It, it accumulates, and I just can't, um, I can't fit in the twitch into that schedule. So um, I'm back, and we're going to work on the M1911 pistol that I had, uh, I be believe, left off Um well, actually, I left off in mid-October, so I did spend a, a little bit of time on here. Uh, let's see. Let's bring in the reference. Got that, and then we're going to bring the other one in. There we go. Okay, uh, we're gonna do some cleanup on the the text of the gun. So I'll bring up Substance Painter here, and we can see just how it looks. So, um, oops. So I already started adding like dirt, and uh, honestly, this is pretty good for a game asset I think uh, there's a couple things if you go really up close that you'll notice but uh, for the most part this is pretty good the next thing that I probably want to work on is breaking up the materials a little bit more so like right now we only have one type of metal and then wood and that's great two is better than none um, but we want to try to break it up even a little further like some of the reference has and um, I don't know uh, I wanted to see if I can thin out the just like decrease the thickness of the letters of the text um, right now it's not like how you see in the reference so um, let's see if we bring in let's see if we bring in the reference here I don't know if that's a good one. It's not a good one. Let's go through all of this. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is a good example. Um, it's more sharp and crisp and not as thick. Uh, but this could also have to do with the the texture size. Let me see what the texture size is. Size 2, 2048. Um, yeah, I mean, typically for like an asset of this size, you'd look at something that's no bigger than 1024. So the fact I brought it 2048, it's really for, um, that's really for uh, portfolio purposes. Actually, I actually think I might have brought it down from 2096. Can see. Let's see. It doesn't hurt to try to do that and see what happens. It might take a a minute, so we can not just sit here. But I'm gonna while that's loading, I'm gonna go and go into Photoshop to start editing it while that's loading because I I just increased the size, so it's gonna take a second. Then we can see if it's worth it, and if it's not, then I'll just bring it bring it back down. Hey, Rel, welcome. Thanks for joining. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing great. I feel a lot better than um, than I did, I don't know, two hours ago. I felt good, but now I feel I feel really good. Uh, that has to do with the elections and a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. But that's that was one of the main things. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining in. Yeah, it's a good it's a good week. I will say that this is a great birthday present to me, and uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one feeling the happiness. Um, but uh, I know one thing for sure: when uh, my birthday was on Wednesday, and when as the day progressed, I was like, "Look at uh, I don't I don't need it to be called today. It would be great, and if it was to be called, then let it." be biden and not trump i was just like please do not have i don't want my birthday to be remembering uh that um and so i'm i'm just happy that uh now we we know um what the results are and i can just continue working on working on art just kind of <laughs> go back to uh go back to the grind of things The only thing I wish I was, uh, I was, I wish I was in the city right now. I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of celebration and there's a lot of things happening. I'm, I'm looking at so many videos, um, and I'm not, so it's quiet, but I get to listen and I have, um, I have TV, the TV going on in the back and once in a while I'll take a look at all the social media platforms. <laughs> yes. Victory dance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm it look it literally looks like New York is a party. Somebody recorded themselves like recorded outside. It looks like their balcony was overlooking Central Park and you could just hear the distant honkings. Yeah, I've, man. It must be it must be great. It must be loud. Thank God it's in the middle of the day. It wouldn't, I know, no, it wouldn't, the night wouldn't stop people from celebrating. All right. So, so one of these, out of all this text, all this text is actually from pictures that I, that I added a gradient uh, map to, and then adjustment layer to, and then I changed some levels. So uh, it's a little difficult to change the thickness. I would have to retype it, but I think I have a pretty solid font that looks the most like the text that I got from the pictures or the font that's been used on those weapons, on those guns. Um, what I might try to do, I don't know if we can even thin this out. 
I have to be very clever with this. Oops. Yeah, um, so it died down at least in my era of BK. I was, yeah, I was just gonna ask, like, what is it like in your areas right now? Did, um, was it gradual? Did you, did you go outside? Did, were you ready to expect something? Or did you hear things and you open your window and you're like, I'm gonna go down there? I wanna know, I wanna know all this. I'm pretty sure if I drive, uh, so I'm, I'm in Orlando and I'm in kind of like, um, in between two, uh, two universities and there's like a main road. I'm off the, the neighborhood that I'm in is very quiet. So there's not going to be much shouting, but, um, if, if you go off just to the main road, I'm pretty sure that there's, there's probably a lot going on and, uh, downtown Orlando, I'm sure is probably like the city is probably going to be a lot more going on the going on uh going yeah happening so i think what i might do is try to do this bevel and then cramp uh cramp the bevel but i don't know if it's gonna work not this i tried this in substance painter it didn't work uh i got an idea i did this before okay so if you want to make your font thinner it just it's it really depends on the resolution of your texture already but you can add a stroke or an inner glow that's like that has a really um, there's no fall off so it's just a harsh line and it might work there we go so but it might make the the font more Like the the corner is more rounded. So let's see if that works. So that doesn't do anything. Inside would be too much. Center would be best. There we go. So we can see the difference. So that might work. Oops. Yeah. Uh, well, at least it woke you up. That's that's pretty funny. I mean, unless you unless you're, you're having a good nap. But um, yeah, I I was hearing that I was reading people were saying like I was, I wasn't even paying attention. I had the window closed. I was sleeping. Be careful out there. Oh, who uh, like Kev Dev or me? I'm like I'm doing okay. I'm I am no doubt disappointed um about Florida, but I'm not surprised that Florida didn't uh it, it didn't go to Biden. I that's why I voted here. So I'm registered in two states and I, I made sure that I was like I'm going to vote once obviously. Um I want it to count and Florida is, the, is has a history of being the swing state and being one of those those states of that they look at closely. So I, I, I voted here. Figured New York was gonna also do really well. Yeah, that was the truth. So that's awesome. Okay, let's see if this is the, let's try this one, see if that works. And it didn't really work as much as I had hoped. Part Partially because it's, it's, it was, just made dirty wasn't I might have to read I might have to redo all of these for now let's see the United States property and see how that holds up okay so this is I brought it to 40 uh, 96 I don't think that's really necessary, honestly. It was even looking fine at 20, at 2K. Mm. When you work on something enough, you start, you see all the, you see all the flaws, but 
You also know that there's a lot that you did right. So I'm just kind of analyzing all of that. So the United States property. Where is that? Is it here? Nope. Markings. What's nice is if I just save this file, then, or if I just save the the text, the font map, then it should update this because everything is hooked up already. Yeah, but we uh we do have to be careful because um there's a there's still on the uh, on the Trump corner. He's claiming voter fraud. So there are still a lot of people who follow him that are in denial. So yeah, there's there's going to be some for the for the next couple of days ahead, there's going to be some uh nobody like who knows what's what's going to happen. But um at least we know one thing for sure. I don't have to hear Trump 2020 anymore. I was getting annoyed of that. Actually, um, not sure if um, not sure if you like follow celebrities on Instagram, but it's so funny to see celebrities who do not say anything of who they're voting for, and then just like. I've seen this more on the Trump side. They stockpile the comments, assuming that that's what the celebrity had voted for, even though celebrity had nothing. They didn't say anything. Um, and then towards throughout this last week, I've seen almost silence or more on the other side, which is really strange. I'm still trying to figure out if it's worth it. I would have to spend like another hour, I think. I, well, I think I'm still in denial of trying to salvage uh, the the font taken from the pictures and just trying to fix those up versus just retyping them out. You know, we'll 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 try the United States text and see if that holds up. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to look at reference from the United, uh, from the photo. There is one that says United States property. Not that one. And this one's in a different font. So, um, so that's what's also pretty cool too. I, I like some models have different fonts. Uh, this one specifically that I was looking at, it has all the same font. Man, and this one's on the left side or the right side of the gun. Why, hello there, Hellforge. Welcome. Working back on this pistol. I am doing well, thank you for asking. Yeah, it's been good. The last, uh, the last news that we had for the country has been, uh, Anything uh, has been all joyous and wonderful, and I love seeing everybody celebrate. Hmm. These markings, they're all different. It's so weird. This is Syracuse, New York. I don't think mine has a location. Unless mine does. I don't know. Hartford, Connecticut.
Cool. Let's see what time is it over there. It's nine, right? That's cool. I rarely um I rarely find that I sleep around like the eight PM to nine PM slot. I used to I used to take more naps. I, I rarely take any naps. Maybe once uh once or twice every six months or so. Okay. I have to remember how I set this up. Oh man, there's so many things in here. Hmm. I forgot, I can't just go in and drag a letter in here. Project. There we go. Bring this in here. Let's see if we can get that little character hmm. not, not exactly sure why it's not showing up oh I know because I didn't crop it there we go Trying to get that little tiny letter P right here. Okay, that's a little too. I actually have no idea how I'm going to crop this. Oh, well, I guess I do know. It's just depends on which one I. I grab. Okay. This is such a small detail, too. And it's not going to work so well because the letter's kind of chunky right now, so you almost can't see what it is. There's probably an easier way to do this, but this is the way that I've found to be the simplest. Although it's not ideal. Like for every uh, letter you put in. Um, technically, yeah, there, yeah, there's so many things I could, I could do. There's so many ways I could do this. Okay. So I am just cropping out and isolating that letter P. And I, that's, uh, geez, that's the fun thing about this. Oh wait, actually, I don't need to do that. Yeah, I don't need to do that. 
I can just paint right over it. Let's see, because I'm not doing any rebaking, so I can just paint this out. Who am I kidding? There we go. Sometimes I just want to keep things simple, but it's trying to keep things simple overcomplicates things sometimes. Surprisingly, ironically, sometimes in order to keep things simple, you just have to bite the bullet and do uh, what seems complex, but you just deal with it later. Almost forgot how to change my brush size because I have not been working in Substance Painter in a couple weeks. All right, there's some artifacting going on with this, I just noticed. It's not good. Hmm. Oh, that's because I hardened that line. Let's see. see thank you for the happy birthday um i am not using an internet cable but is it all right i i um i tried a couple i i changed a couple settings <laughs> it's running smoother than your chin i like that uh that's awesome yeah, I mean, it feels like it's not lagging. Substance Painter is not lagging for me, so that's that's really good. Also, it's not ZBrush. I wonder if that would change anything, but I think that... Cool. Uh, yeah, I think that it's it's gotten... Yeah, it seems smoother, so... Uh, I, I did do some changes to the settings uh, last time. That's weird. Okay. Every time I click, I notice the the seam was changing colors just a little bit. You might see it too. When I press down, like I'm holding down now, it, the seam flickers. But I think it should be fine. All right, and uh, let's see, P. That's, that's a little, it's very little in subtle detail. So uh, I'm just gonna keep this, even though every single weapon I see or every M1911 pistol I see they add, they all have different markings on it so it's really up to me um, but to, for the sake of moving on I'm just going to keep what I have it was it is from one model oh this is what I this is where I got it from so this has all that all that stuff but other models do not have that other models have the United States property on the on the left side. I could do that too. Also, um, what I'll do really quick is save out. Let's see, I have I have the United States property looking like that. So let's do a before and after. I'll take a screenshot of this. Keep it like that. And then I'll go back into, I'm gonna save first off. I'm gonna go back to Photoshop. And I did a, 
an alteration on the thickness of the United States property. That's the only one that I typed out. The others are from images. So if this works, then I might need to uh, type out the rest of that stuff. So let's see. So file save. Uh, I don't know if it just automatically uploads. This is a Photoshop file. Reload, here we go. Oh, I think it's a Photoshop file. Ah, never mind. I have to save it, save it out. I don't know, can I bring in? I suppose I can't bring in a Photoshop file. Wait, okay. Apparently I can bring it in, but uh, for some reason this file isn't um, isn't on my computer. So let's see. So let's close that out. Ah, okay, so that worked. I guess it just didn't have the .psd format extension on the file name. So let's try it. Because it'd be nice if all I have to do is upload the Photoshop and just keep reloading it. Oh man, okay. I still have to save it out. Because I would have to reload every single one of them and I don't want to do that, so. Open. Okay, so I have to actually save this out. Source images, markings. Okay. 
place. Okay. And then if we go back down to here, and then now I can reload and it should change. Hmm. How did it go with the 30 day creature thing you were working with? Uh, working on, um, yeah, it went really well. I, um, I managed to get all 30 creatures done and yeah, like, uh, there's, there's a lot of them, but it, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, the, the cool thing about that challenge is you're every day trying to figure out when you're working on one, you're work thinking about what, what the next one's going to be. And it always ends up that there's not enough time to do what you want. Like, I would love to, for one, uh, composite a creature in a video. But, obviously, that's that's nearly impossible because, um, well, just modeling a character can take four hours, at least. And texturing, and then rig rigging, and then animating, and then compositing, it's, it would take, like, 16 hours, at least. So um, that would that would be my goal one day to be able to do that. But most of them were sketches and like uh, pen illustrations, or a couple. There were there were several ZBrush models, but um, yeah, there was also because of the elections, they canceled um, Instagram uh, temporarily, stopped all recent hashtags from showing. So I the I think the last week I couldn't really share it unless unless I sh shared the the link directly. But normally what I do when I show people my the the challenge and all the stuff I send them the link with all the hashtags. But because they cancel it, like I looked at it and I couldn't even see my own stuff if I clicked on on the link, even though I'm the one that uploaded it. So yeah, I I think. Maybe it's changed now. Maybe they lifted that that up. But uh, yeah, I can share. I can share the link. Let me see. Here we go. Let's see if it shows. Yeah, let's see. Um, yeah. So this is what I'm, I'm mentioning. They they hid all recent hashtags to prevent the spread of false of possible false information and harmful content related to the election. Uh, so this, these are all really old ones. I think the most, the most recent one is actually the one in the upper right hand corner. Normally would show the recent ones first. So goes to show how much they hid because I think that one was the third one I did. So October 3rd and onward, you don't see it. So if you, if you want to look at the creatures, you'd have to click on this link and it doesn't show you all of them. Uh, maybe I'll post somewhere else. I maybe, maybe art station or something, but yeah, this is, this is fun. This is interesting. I can also, let's see, I can, I can show a couple other, I'll show a couple other ones. Cause I think I got some Halloween, Halloween stuff. Uh, this is, this is one that became the most popular one. Um, if you're looking through, if you're looking at this like a, like, um, through your phone, 
uh, in the normal feed format. It, I think people really like that this looks like it's coming out of the picture. So a lot of people like that one. That was probably the most successful one. I think it got like 140, 154 likes. Uh, and then I had a mech beetle. Or where is it? There we go. Uh, this uh, this uh, creature is created by the military government. And it's basically housing a ton of data. And if it, it extracts information. So just have your imagination, use your imagination to think how it extracts information from high pro high profile suspects, and it, it's almost like a little USB bug that that crawls around, and it's not really a creature; it's more of a robot or mech. That one was made in ZBrush. Then I have something as simple as sketches that I did in the in my uh, notebook. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Then I, I took one of, I took a picture of me. Actually, I think Hellforge would enjoy this. Uh, I took a picture that I had of me on the roof I did earlier this year uh, for a friend. I, I went on the roof and played my, I, my electric Dean guitar, and uh, I zombified myself. Nerdophile. Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining. How's it going? It's everybody all chewing on wires to extract info. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it doesn't even like it can it can chew on wires. It can also uh, actually get onto human people, like humans, and get people get information that way. It's considered a lethal weapon. So just think about that. You seen those those uh. Seeing those bugs that crawl into people's ears. Mm. Something like that. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be on the, the opposite end of that. Uh, one, uh, another popular one was the fawn. I, I worked on this creature a while ago, maybe in, in 2014. And, uh, I just redid her to see how far I've progressed. And it, no doubt saw how much I progressed. I was able to do this in five hours. I think this is the one I started on on a Twitch stream, and uh, because it lagged so much, I ended up stopping. And I said, "I'll, I'll re." I think that was. I think this was the one actually. Yeah. Thanks, Hellforge. <laughs> it does fit. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's so many different different things I, I explored, and it's it's a lot of fun. I think another popular one was this guy here. So this is uh, supposed to be a mutated human being after a nuclear explosion. And uh, some people called it cute. Some people actually like the uh, the the toe uh, or thumb feet. It's definitely one of the more bizarre creatures that I created. It's not, there's no topology that it's not ready for animation or anything. It's just uh, the sculpt. Yeah. Then I, uh, I uh, was on uh, Austin's Enter the Gamer actual podcast, which was awesome. And then I worked on this thing. This thing um, I started in another Twitch session, but of course, because of the lag that was happening, I had to stop the stream, and I just continued this afterwards. And this is also a really abstract thing. I don't know what it is. But it's something. So yeah, hopefully the, the the hashtag thing gets removed soon, and people can start looking at the at the creatures.
Here, I'll post this in the link in the in the chat. Doesn't mean that it's gonna work, but feel free to uh, bookmark it. Yeah, I, th I started. I think the fawn and the the abstract monster looking thing, and I think that was it. Oh, I also let's see. I'm also very proud of another ZBrush one that I worked on. It's a monkey. It's like a pumpkin monkey. He likes eating pumpkin. And uh, he's an orange monkey. So I got to play with fiber mesh, which is really fun when you, um, if you can have the time to explore with it. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorites. When I was looking at reference for for him, I was looking at capuchin monkeys, capuchin brown monkeys, and and what I think it's a brown faced monkey. They had black, and then they had white, and they all look very different from each other, which I never really thought about it until I was trying to sculpt this one's face, and I realized I was like, oh, I'm not looking for the the capuchin monkey from Friends. I'm looking for the capuchin monkey from Night at the Museum. So they're all different, which is interesting. Considering I I a huge fan of uh, capuchin monkeys when I was little, and I never made that distinction. I guess because capuchin monkey is such a a, a certain type of monkey compared to like orangutans and rhesus and macaques and um, gorillas and all that stuff. So I, I didn't realize that Kabuchin had even more distinction between them. So I'm trying to figure out why this isn't updating. So what I was going to do is just make a stroke here and see if I could figure out what's going on. Doing the wrong one. Okay, so I'm going to see if this updates. So save that. Okay, so I did that. Let's see if that shows through on the horse. Okay, so it showed through. Um, it just didn't show up here. So that means I have to go in and re dang it, I have to reset everything here. Okay, well that's what happens. I have to reset all of them. Reload all of them. Okay. So now we can see, take a picture. So here's a comparison of before and after and just see if it's worth it. Actually, honestly, can't tell the difference. I don't, actually might not tell the difference just because. Here is. 
Oh, wow. Okay, not that one. Sharp. It's just the texture resolution. Yeah. Yeah, there's like there's a lot to the character modeling side for sure. Thanks. Um yeah, I uh I can post some pictures too in the Discord because I know it's hard to see from that little that little image. Um I so ZBrush has this thing called fiber mesh and um if you actually have to go in the spotlight and or the light box and select but well, first you have to make your selection as a mask so you mask in let's say if you're making a person and you're having like the hair so you mask that section and then you go into the light box and double click any of those hairs those, uh, they're not they don't have to be hair they have grass and they have like alien weird looking fibers but um, you select one of them and then it does a preview. It shows you a preview based off of the mass you made. And then you hit accept and then you can start brushing the hair follicles to the direction you want. But it's a little it's a little tedious because it doesn't work all the time. The brushes are based off your camera, so if you are in a certain angle, the the areas that's facing you is gonna work really well. But let's say um, you brush way too far to the right and there's a surface that is facing a, a different way from a ways from you when you brush then you turn the camera and the the hair is pointing in a different direction than it looked from where you were looking at so uh, I'm I, I think also I'm don't know so much about about it I, I work with it but not like day to day that I can build upon it I work with it maybe once every few months that I'll remember things and then I'll I'll lose it and then I'll come back enough just to remember the basics so yeah that's my that's my experience alright so I'm gonna fix that obviously uh, that's now I know it, it updates only you have to drag and drop it in it again but um so it doesn't do like an auto upload oops Just to, let's see, I have no idea what that is. I'm just going to update Substance Painter so it looks at, I wanted to look at the other, the PSD file, not the JPEG. go Let's see if there's a difference in the cool there's no dif difference in the quality which is good okay so now I'm gonna take this out save it and I don't need to rely on the JPEG anymore I could just rely on the on the Photoshop file so if, if I make any changes, I don't have to go in and keep saving, saving it. But I am going to be a little contradictory here. I'm going to save this cleaned up version just in case I'm saving over the one that had those those random scratches.
Well, I understand why some might not be on Instagram, so that's it's perfectly fine. But then again, I, I'll also um, encourage going on Instagram. You don't have to, like, post anything. It's nice to uh, be able to keep up to date with uh, people you just want to keep up to date with. That, that could even include, like, bands and, and artists, which is really cool. I personally like Instagram, too, because it's not like Facebook where you're with every, all your family members. Like, you can you can deviate and, and, and follow people that aren't in your circle. And it's not like twi uh, Twitter. So it's, it's not focused on the words, even though it's focused on the visuals. And those visuals could ironically be words, too. Like, the image itself could just be a bunch of like a message. That's, I think that's what I like about Instagram. There's no character limitation to how much you write unless you write more than 500 characters, but compared to Twitter's uh, like 140 character thing, you could say a lot. So that's why I like it. It's like it's a convergence of all the other platforms, I think. And it's very convenient to go into, too. Okay, so Mm. I'm going to change, let's see. Oh yeah, I still have to change this one. Um, fix that. Didn't I fix it? No. Aha, uh -huh. okay, reload. And now I should be able to take, take there, it took out that marking. So this is the mask. Hmm. I mean, I can't blame the file. Because it's pretty clear. can only blame the resolution. And I don't think I want to really bring it to 4K. also bring it in a little bit more so it's not as deep. I could just, or just bringing it all the way. This is interesting. Let's try bringing in the, see the bevel node. I, I tried this all out too, but I'm going to try it again. Oop. Bevel node actually does the opposite of what I want. Yeah. 
Let's see the histogram node. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the part gets skewed. And that sucks because you can when you're when you're paint let's say if you're if you're making someone's hair look dapper and it looks super nice and combed to the side. So you make it look and it's it looks so great. So you're just like it's like Jake, you're looking at them from here and you're skull you're you're combing their hair. And it looks so great, right? And like you can tell it just looks amazing. And then you turn the camera and it looks like the wind just blew them. So like you'll just see the, the hair just go all to one direction. And another thing is it doesn't look at it doesn't care about not colliding with skin or the uh, the object itself. So the hair would go into the object, which is not always great. You don't want that. <laughs> yeah, I um surprisingly and it's it's really sad I shouldn't be doing this. I don't save substance. I don't save multiple substance files as much as I do with Maya. I do. And and also like if they if it creates auto save files, I don't delete it. I keep it or I I save a backup file every once in a while when I hit a like a a checkpoint or like a milestone of a of an asset. But part of the reason is like it yeah, it takes so much space, but it's wor it's worth it than spending hours again. Jeez, your weapon folder alone is 135 gigabytes. Um, what I'm trying to do is I want to thin out the letters, but I can't thin them out because of the resolution. So I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if I should up the resolution just for the just for the uh, the text or if I shouldn't. Um, another thing that another way that this could be achieved is simply by changing this so it only affects the it only affects the base color or it only affects the let's see or it only affects the roughness. So let's say there's no height information. Like this almost looks pretty good. I like the back here. I think this came out really well. I see some artifacts, but you know, this is a good time to just kind of like leave it. Speaking of which, I see some artifacts that I can't leave.
That doesn't look too bad either. I'm trying to think if the if it's better a darker color or a lighter color. If I was supposed to fake it, because obviously with uh, this weapon, like any weapon, really, like the markings, unless unless it ex explicitly inten intentional, I think the the markings don't have any color information in them. I think it's just height information. So I might have to fake it. Go on Instagram scan. Hmm. I can try that. So I have histogram scan. Let's try blur. Stacked on top of blur. No, I don't. I don't know if that's gonna help. So if I bring the intensity down, let's see if I turn off the color. Maybe bring the height a little. I think it might actually widen it. That's the thing. Oh, it wasn't even on the node. Is this what you meant? Or is it the opposite way? Hey, <laughs> red coat, welcome. Hi to you. <laughs> welcome, thanks for joining. How are you doing? How is it in, uh, I, I can't recall if you live in Austin specifically. I just, I know you work there, but um, how, how's it going in Texas? Yay, you and I, our states both suck when it came to voting. Uh, but, hey, at least uh, New York City pulled through. I'm so happy about that. You use the blur to make it a bit more shallow and the histogram to sharpen some. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't... Oh, I see. But then it, it seems like it would just make it a little bit more a little bit more thicker. Yeah, I think this would have worked if it wasn't that the the font itself was already like one one pixel uh width. That's the thing with this. I all my tricks that I've tried don't work on this. Like this looks cool. I think it looks cool. It's just not the the look I'm going for. I was gonna say that's great, but I put the blur to zero. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Dallas. That's good. I'm glad to hear. And yeah, I think um, I, I think it's I think it's great now. Um, everybody, hopefully, hopefully where you are, it's cel celebratory. Mm, 
might have to play with the scan balance and contrast to see if it changes anything. Yeah, I've been I've been playing around with it for for hours, even even outside the stream. And what like the the main thing is taking these pixels and bring it, and making it more narrower. But as you can see, it's already so pixelated. And when you bring the height in, it's it needs at least one pixel width to to use to 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 offset, right? So you have it like like right now, if you look at, I wouldn't say look at the one, but look at, I guess, yeah, I guess look at the, the N here. Yeah, based because of the resolutions that it, it's at right now, if I try to make this any thinner, obviously it wouldn't exist. Or it would look kind of holy, like there's going to be gaps in the N, especially in the slant part. And then when I try to change the height, it's going to add an extra pixel border around them to push it in to get that taper. So I can't really see how I'm going to be able to get what I want unless I update the, the texture. It just feels so easy. It feels like it would be so easy. Uh, Red coat, uh, are you um, playing anything? Playing anything uh, new or any exciting, exciting things that you're you just like discovered? I know. Um, I just recently bought. I think it's called Transist Transistor on Steam, and somebody recommended, so I bought it. It was like a 60% off sale or something. But I haven't had a chance to play. Position and contrast. Nah. Get a coffee if you, if you want one. I, I bet you're, you're making, you're giving some great suggestions. Um, those are the things that I had tried and just seems like it was not working. It's it's one of those frustrating things that you know like what's what's going on, but like for example, I like the histogram scan here because it makes things a little bit more clear to read. So let's say I. I'm going to create, I'm going to duplicate this layer, have it show only height. Roughness makes it harder to see. Okay, so only height, and then the other one is just going to be color. Okay, that doesn't look right. So we're just bring the height back, but just bring it down. Just keep it very subtle. And then let's just try faking it. So it's going to be like that. Although roughness might work really well here too. Hmm. Or have great his yeah have great music but I could never get into the gameplay. Actually, that's why I bought it because uh, the uh, the music I heard the soundtrack was really good. <laughs> uh, that's cool. Okay, I'm I think I'm getting an idea. I'm gonna delete that. I think I have to bring the height in just a little bit.
and that kind of thinned it out. Yeah, you know what? That actually that works really well. I've been playing Minecraft of all things recently. Need to get into something new. Is it is it so um by saying that are you saying that um it you don't you haven't played it in the past and this is new to you? I mean, obviously everybody knows Minecraft. I personally haven't played it yet either if that's the case. Um I know uh I had a lot of coworkers that are really into it. And yeah, I've never played it myself. Hash code, welcome. Thanks for joining. I finally have the game on the on the Switch. Wow, isn't that something? That's uh that's actually a good point. Time, desire to play, and actually having it. Sometimes we have the time and desire to play, but we don't have it. And then we get the game, and we have no desire to play. And if we do, then we might not have the time. The common problem of today with games. Alright, so I didn't actually do much, and I'm liking how it looks. I might want to clean that up, though. Model of something. Model of 1911. So it's all kind of janky. Let's see. If I grab United States and then let's see if I bring this up. Model of 1911.u.s.army I mean if this works then I might, might just use this that'd be cool Okay, we'll try this. Let's see how this works out. Save that. And then go back in here and change the marking of the model number. Or the model marking itself. Okay, that's the wrong one. I have to reload. It's like a process here. Reload and then there we go. That is so thin. Hmm. Do I want that? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I get into Minecraft phases every year or so. Okay. Let's see. Bastion is the game they released before Transistor. Both the music and the voice over narration is great too. Oh, cool. No, I haven't haven't heard or, or played Bastion. Do I have to? Like, is that a good one to... Is that is that a good one to play before it? Before Transistor? Learn to hear all the time. Don't hear broken. Jeez, that's the struggle. You have the game... You don't, well, you don't have the game, you don't have the money to buy the game, you have all the time in the world, as uh, Redcode said. Um, and then uh, later on as an adult, you you might have the money to buy all of these things that you finally, that you wanted and you could finally get it, but you don't have the time. That's the dilemma. 
I swear I totally understand that. Are you doing the gun for the por for portfolio? Uh, yes, um, this is a portfolio piece, which um, which is why I'm conflicted about like resolution. Um, if granted, if you're doing something specifically for your portfolio, you can like up it to 4K. But I also want to get in the habit of treating this as if I'm going to use it for a production game, like an actual video game. And 4K is what we don't usually have. So, um, yeah, but but otherwise, this is this is for a portfolio. Also, want to bring it into Unreal and see how it looks after. So, if anybody has any opinion, I just changed the the model of 1911 marking. They obviously can't see, so I would have to darken it. But um, trying to think if I want to keep keep it or keep the old one, which is from an image. It's almost like you have to have everything at the same consistency. So if I change this, I would have to change everything else. Let's see. Reload and go into our markings model. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Um the problem is I have two different sides and they're both two different properties. Like the one, this one has like a lighter base color. Oh, it has no base color at all. It has a brighter roughness. This one doesn't have roughness. Oh, this one doesn't have a base color either. It has a darker base color. I will decide on which way to go. And that happened with Substance Designer. Oh man. Yeah, that sucks when you buy when you bought new software. You just can't. You don't have the time to play. Uh, Time to play. Time. I guess you could say time to play in it. Oh, I got the time, just not the desire and energy needed to learn it. That makes sense. All right, cool. It's good to know about Bastion, though. So I remember at one point, like a PS3 game, you might be able to get away with no hide information for the text. It's just, um, just like wear and tear around, um, in the base in the base color. Now I I'm gonna bring this to. Size forty ninety six. Let's see how that works again. Thanks, hash code. Um, yeah. So, uh, I'm for this one. I am not mirroring many parts or overlapping. I did um, at the beginning, and I realized that I didn't need to. There's a lot of space that I had left on. Uh, on my UV space. So uh, usually the way that I work, cause I do work in a, uh, I work in a AAA studio and we work with a lot of weapons. So um, we can't afford having 
a lot, we do, can't afford having everything to be unique texture, so we do mirror the front, the back, and the left and right sides. But with this one, because I knew I all of it could be unique and I could spend more time on it, everything is pretty much having its own UV space, even even down to the uh, to the screws on the. Even down to the screws on the uh, to connect the wood panels to the the frame. So um, let's see. I know Hellforge is a developer, and he's he's uh, aspiring, trying to break into the industry. Um, take a look at his stuff if anybody's interested in hard surface modeling and hard surface texturing and art. Uh, a lot of great. A lot of great stuff on his channel, so check him out. Uh, I know uh, Red Coats is a programmer. He's told me specifically, and I keep forgetting UI programmer. And uh, I don't know if I don't know if he uh, does much Twitch streaming. I think he said he will one day. Um, hash code, please. Uh, if you feel free to like introduce yourself and. Uh, if are you an artist? Do you work in the industry? Are you trying to get in the industry? Um, yeah, like game developer. Are you an indie developer? Would love to know. Like the color scheme, overall texture. I think the most important how part how it looks in general. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, my like my main concern is trying to get it as realistic as possible, uh, and that can that can be difficult because the the more you go to the more you keep going to the next level of realism the more you have more decisions to make on what the material is going to look like going to feel like and uh yeah it's it's fun gosh let's see that's very true i've always enjoyed so <laughs> but Hellforge, you've definitely worked with artists. You've you've created um I think you've done some assets for Nova, right? For her game. So I would say you're a developer. Or you could just call yourself a um freelance or available by commission developer. Yes, Redcoat. <laughs> I know every time I'm like, he's gonna stream, right? I mean, I'm not the one to, I shouldn't be the one to persuade anybody because it took me like a whole weekend to try to set up one stream. I needed the help of, of, of a couple people like for nine hours a day just to try to get the first, uh, just to try to get the first stream up and going. All right, so I think I'm gonna do this philosophy thing that that I have at my at my work. We say go to the to the high resolution and then later then half it down um, if you need to. So I guess this that means I'm gonna work in 4K if this doesn't lag. That way I could just try to get the way I could try to get the text that I want. I work as a 3D artist in a Ukrainian outsource studio. Awesome. Good for you. How's how's it? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Think of the distance over there. How's it over there? What time is it? Is uh, is it six hours or is it more? So I work I work at a studio where uh, we work with us. Um, our other office is in Sweden, and that's six hours from, uh, basically or uh, east coast, United States. So, um. I got the six hours. It's really cool. Have older streams on YouTube now when I did a monthly game development series with the Frag Dolls. Oh, cool. Wait, why does the, why does Frag Doll sound familiar? Is that the um? Wait a second. Is that the all all female um? Esports team, or maybe I'm thinking of something else.
Wow, it's around midnight for hash code. <laughs> for an Irish indie video game studio. That's very specific. All right, you know what? I feel a lot better now. This looks really cool. Not gonna lie. Cool. So, um... And you know what? That actually doesn't look too bad, either. But I have to settle. I do have to settle on a look. Kind of like this. It looks dusty. That's because it's no base color in here. And then here it looks a little darker because there is a darker base color. I swear, I'm never this obsessed with text on weapons. Okay, so like if you look at this, let's look at this angle for this weapon here, or this um, this angle here. It looks like it's white, but it's not. It's well, that's the thing. You don't know unless um unless you see a video, and I do have a video, so maybe that's actually a good idea. Let's see YouTube. Sometimes, um, you, you know that, you know that whole thing that we, it tore the country apart, and that was the blue and gold dress? Does every, does everybody remember that? So, obviously, when you look at an image, and if it's close enough to an object, it gives you less of a sense of the context that, uh, of, of the lighting situation. And that can cause us to see things in a way that, um, it is not actually happening. So, uh, we, we will never know if it was a blue or gold dress or a, what was it, white? I don't remember. It's like blue and black and white and gold. Because it's only, a, it's only an image. If it was a video clip and they showed you moving around, in, a, in an instant, everybody would know what it is. But since it's only an image, we'll just never know. And that's the same with these with these guns. In every image, the lighting catches a different way onto the surface. So it's just going to look different. That's just how it's going to happen. So um, what I have to do is go and look up an M1911 pistol. And I have a good, I have a couple good ones here. So if I bring this over here. I think it's that guy. Wait, hold on. I have a really good video. Um, one of my favorite channels. This guy shows all these old school weapons. If I can find it, it's going to be really nice. Mm -hmm. Ah, here. Okay. Let's see. Cool. I was right. Yes. I thought a fragdoll sounded so familiar because I was I ha I read an article about about them. Actually, it was was written by an NYU Game Center student, and I was like, I think that's the one. That's cool. It's so cool. That must have been a fun experience. Oh, okay. So I'm so it's close. Ukraine, seven hours ahead. Well, thanks for joining so late. So he he shows off the guns really close. So if we can see if we can see the the markings, then it's going to be good. 
And this is also a darker metal, too, than the one I have. That looks really good. It's good texture reference here. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so this is interesting. It looks like the, the, the letters are actually raised from the surface in this one. This one's pressed in. I know you can't hear the audio. But he's just talking about like specifics of of the feel and the the trigger feel. So yeah, like from from here, it it looks like the the letters could be lighter, and it really I, I don't think there's a there's a like they don't actually paint in a color in the engraved areas, but um. I do like in certain lightings it looks like it could be it look like it could be darker or lighter. So we can fake that with we can either put the base color and it'll just be inaccurate but it'll look pretty right or we can um keep the engraved areas with a a roughness like a high roughness value and it'll not match the the surface that it sits on so it'll look pretty good. And that's what I have on both sides of the gun. I'll, I have uh, two different variations. I'm just trying to figure out what, which one I want to do. So like here, you can't even see the lettering in, in, in one angle. I think that's what's so great. Like this shows the, the illusion of you might see something in an image and, and perceive it a certain way and then you look at it in movement and it's not at all what you expected. And this happens a lot with texturing, but it happens a lot with like animation or modeling too. Let's see. Okay, let's. Uh, is that because you don't care about text or because you normally have an art lead and director leaning over your shoulder telling you to get on with it so you can't spend this much time getting the text correctly um let's see not like usually um i'm working with outsourcing so uh they will do the text so i don't know they're it usually just looks really good in game when i worked on a weapon for when i worked on a weapon and for jc4 uh, there was text. It wasn't that much text, and it was huge. So uh, it was bigger than this one. And normally, if, if it's super small like this, you'd probably just ignore it. But I don't want to ignore it. So that's that's part of the reason why. Yeah, like, I'm spending more time on this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, they can be concerned over a lot of things. I... I research a lot for because I'm I'm working weapons, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that I know that I'm looking up that if they want if they wanted to um, put an investigation like why is she looking up C4? I mean, if you play just just cause three and just cause four, you know you know why. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't think th I think they on the grand scheme they they have more th troubling things to be concerned about. But it's still it is funny. So he's comparing the M1911 and the 1911A1. Uh the A1 came out before and then the 11 came out a little later. They look super similar, except for a couple of differences. What software did you model um, in Meyer Max? Ma 
actually Maya. I haven't spent too much time in Blender, though I want to. Oh, nice. That's awesome that you keep in touch with them. Yeah, that's sad when I read the article that they disbanded. Um, that sucks because they seem like they stood for a lot. And they uh, they were looked up to a lot, which is nice. So that's, uh, that's really cool that you keep in touch. Let's see how Forge is sharing links. I actually think I like this one. I think this look better than this one. Because you can't see this one as much. So let's do the right. So well, I'm going to copy the height. I'm just going to try to be exact here. It's the same thing. Okay. And then the base color. We'll just copy the base color. And then this doesn't have roughness. What? Okay, I can settle with that. Cool. That is a history lesson, Hellforge. Woo! That gun guy. Oh, that's really cool. Let's see. Whoa, someone's shooting a machine gun. Yeah, that's, uh, they're going through, I'm looking at the development of the model in 1911. Oh, they break it down. That's cool. Wish I had seen that when, uh, when I was doing, I, I didn't know he broke it apart. Here, I can share what I'm looking at. Thanks for sharing, Hellforge. really cool. This seems like an older version. Yeah, this, well, this one doesn't have a, uh, is it safety? Cool, cool. That's actually good. That's good material reference. Although the the metal is a little different. I don't know if it's the same. Um, and by metal, I mean like the the coat, the finish. All right. So I'm actually moving on from the markings. But um, there's still a couple things I want to do. Uh, so oh, and I have to save too. <laughs> yep, those searches. Oh, 
Okay, uh, yeah, I think I got to the 20, 26 mark. By the way, do you have some people from Europe or India in your studio, assuming that you work in the U.S.? Yeah, um, uh, we have, I can't say for the Swedish office, but um, we have a few, we have people from like a lot of different um, ethnicities, walks of life, countries. Um, I can't think off the bat, uh, off the top of my head, but we do have people from different countries here um, to the point that like everybody has their, their work visas and everything. And with the situation that was going on with immigration and, and uh, not, not being a citizen uh, that caused people from the office, unfortunately to get deported. Uh, so yeah, um, that's not, that's not fun. But I love that. I love the fact that uh, I've I have a lot of uh, coworkers of different uh, different homes, and it's it's just really cool to see. Uh, I totally I added grime here, but it looks like it's built up a lot. Maybe I could see it more now too because I up the resolution. Which is, which is great, but now I'm like seeing things that I don't, I don't want too much dirt. There's a lot of rust too, so I have to clean up some of that rust. So yeah, like if you if you look at this reference here. Actually, what's really bothering me is that bake here. It's so sad. I don't know how that happened. On the uh, the trigger guard. I might have to go in and, and rebake that. Save it. So we can actually see. I'll, I'll, I'll bring in the the gun so we can see in Maya. Grab a water. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not the best person to, to talk about that. Like, I. I'm not sure. I don't work with a visa or anything, but I know we have coworkers that do. They work out where the the management they they work that out with them. Um, but uh, typically, it's like if you have a work visa and you're here, and then you you're good. But let's say uh, I think one of the situations we we had was ownership changed. So uh, if if you're if you're working at a Swedish based company in America. It, but you're a Swedish citizen, technically you're still fine, so you have your work visa. If you, if the Swedish company no longer is owned by uh, Swedish, then now you need to get citizenship of the country that that owns the the company, or you can't be here. So that's what happened. Uh, let's see, gonna have to run. Need to do. Totally, Redcoat. Thanks for joining. Good luck with your errands and stuff. Stay safe.
see it. I usually stick to <laughs> that one's a mystery. What is a mystery, Hellforge? Uh, I usually stick to the same resolution. I bake the maps and paint it in the Tillion because generation generators SB start working weirdly when you up the resolution, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't noticed much of that myself. As for, as for like the the weirdness that I was seeing on the trigger guard, that was before I upped the resolution. Oh, okay. I was looking for this. There we go. Yeah, I, I sh probably should. I, I don't want to do it too often. You don't want to like jump back and forth uh, between resolutions so often. But I think Substance Painter is also very good at handling that when it because it's a procedural. I think that's the the upside of using Substance Painter. Whereas like in Photoshop, let's say if you're working in something in one in two K, and then you go to try to change that, then what's going to happen is um, if you're going to up-res it, then you're going to have to go back and through all those layers and up-res them in different ways. But if you start at, let's say, 4K, things are chugging and everything. You can, it's it's not, as, not as flexible. But I can imagine some... Some generators, yeah, act funky when they're, they're up-resed. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of this. You know, I also think that the reason that the stream might be running a little bit more smooth is because I'm sharing my screen instead of a window. I think that helps. Okay, so here's my low poly. Let's change this. So I'm really not sure why it decided to bake that way. Should have been fine. Hmm. Like this, what's happening here? Oh, okay. I didn't harden that. I'm gonna see if it if it's showing in all of them too. Should be. Also, that's not good. Yeah. To rebake just just for that little thing. I'm just contemplating if it's even worth it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the trigger are, that's the mystery, gotcha. I usually say oh wait, I read that. That's pretty good to know though, since I've been wanting wanting to move to the US for the past ten years. <laughs> yeah, um I like that last part. Um I mean, yeah, apart from the f last four years. Yeah, it's, um, 
It's good. It's... I will be the sucker to say that I think the next four, like the next four years, are going to be much better. So now would be a good time to compare to like well, compared to like a year ago. Now's a probably better time if it wasn't for the pandemic. Hard edges, yeah, they're they're all right. So I actually had to originally originally they were softened. So if I go in and soften these, they were softened and they caused their own issues. So um, and that's be that's because I think it's just the the thinness of of uh, this area itself isn't helping. Like, it's just a thin, it's a thin trigger guard. So, um, I hardened, I hardened it, and thinking that was going to help it, but it didn't. Hmm. Trying to think. It also might be, like, I might need to add a holding edge inside. I might need to hold it at a holding edge um, through that portion which I don't know if I if I want to do it but it might help so something like that that might help it and then take it out later just sucks because then I have to go through and duplicate this to all the other models but I think for this I'm probably just gonna leave it the way it is in in uh, on the other on the other exploded models like all of them there I might just focus on this one I think this one here is also yeah this one's kind of awkward I think hard to see underneath so that's why I made this so we can see from all different angles so it doesn't look bad until you know you're you're looking for it that looks fine there Yeah, the pandemic kind of threw. Yeah. Yep. The pandemic definitely uh, is the worst destroyer of plans ever. So I really need to place hard edges where the UV shell ends. Um. Well, it depends because if uh, if you if you laid out the UV edges accordingly then usually yeah the um the edges go where the surface changes beyond they exceed um like a 45 to 90 degree angle um but that's if that's if that's not the case then you might not need the hard the hard edge because that's going to cause issues for you in in adding seams if if uh, if the hard edge is where you don't want it to be, so for example, um, I explicitly made it so that there's no hard edges here, but there could be UVs, and you can actually see close. Let's see. Yeah, there's a 
So there's a UV seam here, but I didn't want hard edges. So you can see the UV seam if you go really close, the texture seam, but if you go away, uh, then it's it looks good. But I didn't want a hard edge there. So there, there are certain, there are definitely certain scenarios that are going to be different. Don't spend a single day at home. I'm going to work as usual. Wow, that's that's insane. Did you notice that you didn't notice any difference, hash code? How are the cases there? Because I know the rest of the world is pretty quarantined. We're still kind of quarantined here. Hmm. Trying to think if it's worth it. Uh, okay. Also, we can take a look at the high poly just to see what's going on. Guys, I might be uh, I might be ending the the stream in a bit. This is not I don't like I would love to hear in the chat what what would entertain people to watch because um, I would like to fix this, but I it's such a tedious thing. I don't know if anybody wants to see that. Is it something like the text, for example, too? That's very tedious. Uh, so let me know what you think you'd like to see or what you don't want to see. Uh, so I know for next time. Because this could get really technical and tedious. And this is like the underside of art asset creation that people don't want you to see. And it's not even hard. It's just mundane. And it um, it's like watching paint dry. And uh, I don't want my stream to feel to you like a paint drying session. I want it to be like development, like a cool development thing. Um, so just like let me know uh, what what you would like to see. And believe it or not, you might think we didn't really do much today, but with your help, I was able to get the uh, text to uh, the way I want to. Um, I would. No, what I when I guess what I know that people are watching too I want to try to fix what you might potentially see maybe you don't see it maybe you do and uh, that text just makes me want it I wanted it to look right there's a couple things that the reason I'm, I'm holding off on um, like doing a separation of of metal um, because I want to rebake everything, and if I spend too much time, or not spend too much time, but if I go down the path of, let's say, like, fixing this little piece here, I'm actually going to rebake that, so I'm not sure if it's going to look the same anyway.
so it added paint. Where's my brushes? Here we go. It's like the most, the most I'll do is, let's see, edit, redo, add paint. Okay, so this is lagging because now I did the 4K and I can feel it. But yeah, like typically I want to get all the bake stuff done. So I try to get like the really good normal map that I'm happy with, then I can move on. The problem is as I'm texturing this and moving into further details of texturing, I realize that there's some portions of it that I still need to fix the bake for. It kind of puts a, a, a fork in the road or whatever you call it. Like it just kind of keeps me um, from going a little f faster than I want to. Yeah, the, the normal the normal bake is one of the most important things when it comes to texturing, especially in Substance Painter. So um, up to this point, the rest was very procedural. But I, what I want to do is take out some of the just take out some of the intensity. Okay, I have a lot to catch up in the chat, apparently. It's pretty interesting, yeah. How visible will the dodgy bake be in the renders with the materials? That's a good question. I, I didn't notice it in the beginning, but now, like, that I see it, it's so obvious to me. And I haven't actually. Let me let me export the textures because I have old textures that I'm working with. Let's see. We can see what it looks like in Maya, but I definitely have to see what it looks like. Um. Oh man. Okay. I think that should be good. Substance Painter updated, and I know export settings are a little. Uh, changed. They changed a little. Um, but yeah, I should. What I should do is see it in Unreal. That's actually helpful. Just a good point. I give that advice to people, and I don't even use it apparently. the The main thing is you want to see where wherever you're rendering it. If it looks good, then that. It works. That's that's good. You're done. Um, I'm also. I think I'm also on the on the fence of. Not really. Um, here's the thing. If I'm just going to be doing it for my portfolio, then that's and it looks good there. Then that's it. If you're gonna do it for Unreal and it doesn't look good there, um, but uh, then, then you have to fix it. I'm 
using it for my portfolio right now. I don't know in the future what when I'll be using it for a game. So it's kind of that thing of, do I just try to finish it and polish it for enough to, to, to look in a render? Or do I want to use it um do i just want to get it done now for to look for it to look good in the in the game engine and sometimes it's not always the like the simplest answer one second i'm trying to figure out where my new textures where my new textures went. So I still have old textures. Didn't update. Okay. It's really weird. They didn't export. Oh, save settings. Oh, I hit save settings. I didn't export. So that's why. Funny enough. It's Hmm. We had all our essential engines for the customer at the time. Oh, so um, so I'm guessing uh, you just uh, worked out like you you got went to the office, and was there nobody else there? It was just you and a couple other I guess people who had to work with the essential engines, as you said that. Okay, that's so um, from feedback from Hellforge and uh, Hashcode, it sounds like, you know, I could, I'll do the mundane stuff then. You don't want, you want to see it. You want to see it all. Well, ha the thing is, uh, Hashcode, the parts that aren't, the problem are the areas actually that I did put uh, hard edges on. So I did put a hard edge on the on the trigger guard, and it it still it caused an issue. Um, on the other one, um, on the on the uh, the safety part, that one is soft edge. So yeah, like adding the hard edge is probably going to fix that. Hanging out with all of the highlight of my week. Uh, no, that's awesome. I'm, that means a lot. Uh, let's see. I like hanging out with everybody here. Um, Elforge, uh, you always come back, yeah, so it's it's always a pleasure being able to talk to you through here. It's such a weird way of communicating, but even more uh, logical in the, the pandemic times, I think. Uh, Hashko, do you have any, do you have a, uh, a Twitch stream or that, like, do you have like a schedule that you do streaming? Would love to follow. I'll follow you if you do, uh, if you do um, Twitch streams. I would love to try to catch it sometime. Okay, so you know this actually doesn't look too bad now that I'm seeing it. And I, I suppose I could call it, I could say I'm done. Here's a bullet, by the way, that I worked on. I can turn the high off. 
So the first one that I worked on. And there's a lot of rust in here, so I'm definitely going to fix that rust. But it looks good in here. Uh, I can bring it in Unreal, but I think it's just going to look pretty much the same. Um, you can understand that the level struggles stay inside all the time. <laughs> yeah, there are some other people at the office, but our country is wishy-washy around these subjects. Most people get tired of wearing masks after like two months. Dang. That sucks. Yeah, I, I would. I would also. I, I'd stay in too when, when I know it's not great out there. Um, if in terms of people having decency of just trying to to wear masks. But um, it helps that you know the things you do are normally inside. You're alone working on your computer, and that is how it goes. <laughs> yes, don't bite the bullet. All right, well, thanks, Hellforge, for that um, suggestion. I do, uh, I do, like, that's my thing. Like, I, I, that's something that I always recommend of bringing the textures and seeing it in the engine and seeing it in Maya, and I just forget. Because I get, I get so caught up in wanting to get it looking right in Substance Painter, then having to remind myself that if I don't look at it, see how it looks in other places, then how would I know that it is good? Maybe like I'm spending too much time on something that won't even matter. Uh, like this inside of this barrel. Um, this is something that I could quickly, quickly do and just fix instead of trying to figure out trivial things. It's like, where's the... Is this the right weapon? And am I looking at the right weapon? I am. But I think it's this one. always thinks it's going to take two seconds and then I can't find the shell. Here, I think this is it. So I want to get rid of, basically I want to get rid of that, the rust inside. think it's rust. Oh, it's not rust. Okay. It's dirt. Should have known. There we go. Yeah, I don't want dirt on that. There we go. I have to fix the wood too. It's too shiny. Even though it looks it looks right, just it's too shiny. Um the next thing I want to do and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to, like, what I'm going to do is I want to make a tribute pistol. Um, use it basically with uh, making this with another skin, I guess. Make it look, look a little bit more decorative. And uh, this is going to be for Veterans Day coming up. And 
So I guess I'm going to try to fi finish this by then. I think I think I could call this done. I might just change the color of the metal here. Uh, not not on the screw, but um, on some other places. Maybe this, uh, I think this is the safety or the, the mag release. So I might change the the color to like a dark metal. I believe this one actually is a dark metal, this little tiny screw. No, it is not. Let's see. Yeah, you always like in in general when you give advice it's kind of obvious to be able to see when somebody's working on something there's like tell them what to do and then you, you you're in the driver's seat you just forget. So that's awesome. Um might let's see might be a good idea for save as well if you haven't. Yes, good idea. Looking great. Thanks, Hashko. Thanks for joining and for uh, also your your great suggestions. Um, I hope you come um, by to another more of my Twitch streams in the future. Are you going to add Edward to the wood? Yes. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Let me see. see if I could get so these are all obviously new it's weird um, some of the wood panels that are are older they have wear to them but they obviously clean the dirt so like the pattern itself is gone but they're still shiny so I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that I can actually add Okay, let's let's see for a second. Go to bolts. We're gonna make the bolts a dark, a darker metal. Okay. So this is back bolt, serrated bolt borders. I don't know what that, I don't know what I was saying here. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so I, di I just didn't, I just didn't add a, a color for this. So right there, hmm. okay, so adding a color is not really going to do much here because of the way that I created the bolts, bolt borders, what is this? I have to like revisit, use my mind to try to remember where or, wh or what part I left off on with these bolts. Bolt borders, what the heck is bolt borders? Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Okay, well obviously I don't want that, so we just want height information. And the bolts themselves. I can go into the. Let's see. I can go into the uh, mask and see what these are. All right. 
Uh, that's why that, those got really dark. Change the base color to multiply. Make it instantly a little darker. So it just adds a little, it just pops a little bit. I don't even think that's how how they look, but um, I think those specific uh, bolts or whatever they are, um, I think they're uh, they're the same color you know, usually as the frame. But it does add some breakup of the material. that and that down there even though it's so it's subtle what is going on there serrated Okay. I don't know if I did that on purpose. I think that looks better. It actually doesn't look that bad. And then with the wood, since Hellforge asked, I will add just like a uh, kind of like a, a, a base wear to it. And that's where, let's see, are you going to, oh, uh, mass editor and my mass. Cool. Yeah, let's see if we can get it to the wood. And then let's expand that. All right, so um there's two things here. There's the wood panels itself with the big reeds, and then you have the knurling. So we do want the knurling to be factored in. So what I want to do is create a layer above the knurling. And let's see. We're going to treat this like the worn, like worn wood. Be nice if I could find good reference that I have. I know I have some reference. I have a lot of reference. Let's get the roughness. We'll crank it up, actually. And then just put wear and add a black mask. And we'll see how this looks. 
so we'll add a black mask and then add a generator but rather than go to a uh, generator I'm gonna go to smart masks and let's see let's try dust surface and just see what happens Did it do it? Can't tell. Oh, I guess it did. Hmm. Or wait. There we go. Okay, that's really subtle. Not as um, as climactic as we wanted it to be. All right, we're gonna, we're probably gonna just try a uh, the typical edge wear and see what what that does. Edge scratched. Let's see. Would all have to have a bright green color to make it super obvious. Yeah, um, trying to do that with the color dodge might need to make it a little more, more obvious. And also, now I have to go in and go into uh, two mass builders. I think this is the one that I had before. Okay. So I have to go down and scroll. So this is how you, um, this is how, let's say if you added high poly detail and you baked it, and now you're, you're adding, you added height information in Substance Painter, how do you get that height detail to be seen by your generator? And so that's uh, something that we can see here. So right now we got the neural pattern. Uh, that's the sort of like the uh, the diamond pattern that you see on the on the wood panel. So it's not being picked up currently. So we actually have to hook it up and tell the generator to pick up knurling. Uh, now, the important thing is the knurling or whatever your height detail is, it needs to be in a layer below the dirt. So it can't be above the dirt or above the generator. It has to be below it to be able to uh, see that. So if we go to the metal edgeware uh, generator and go down to micro height. So first thing, uh, first thing is to think about where your detail lies in. Is it in the normal channel? Or is in the height channel. So, so in the height channel, then go to click on it, 
and then go to anchor points. Oh, and also, first thing, before that, you actually have to uh, go to your pattern or your detail and add a anchor. So add anchor point. So now it, it can be seen as an, it can be seen by the micro uh, height information in the generator in that slot. So knurling mask. And you're going to go back into the generator, go down to the bottom, micro height. And now, uh, before anchors, I can click on it. Now I can. So I'll click on it and click on knurling mask. And it should update. If it doesn't, there's a couple other things we might need to do. Okay. So uh, aside from that, you have to go to, let's see. Okay, that's good. We have to go up to right above the micro height. There's a micro details, and right now it's all both both of them are set to false, so we have to actually turn on the micro height to true. So give it a second, and now you can see that it's picking up that that pattern. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then you're stuck where. The, the generator is clearly going on top of your detail and you're not getting that details not reacting with the mask. So I don't know Hellforge if you used that before, um, but it's super helpful if you need to get that detail um, sunken in with them. Like you need that mask to uh, be affected by it. Yeah, anchors are just really amazing. So uh, like another good example is, uh, let's say you had, let's say I didn't model in this screw. I had it, um, it was, it's just purely just uh, height information. You probably want the dirt to go be caked around it and not on the top. So with this method, what you would do is add an anchor point to the screw height layer and then have the dirt mask or the, the generator layer right above it and then uh, enable again go all the way down to the bottom um, hook it up hook the micro height up with the proper anchor point mass uh, anchor point and then go a little further up and there's micro detail set that to true so there's like, it's like a three step process. Add the anchor point, hook the anchor point up with a generator and enable it. And at one point they didn't even have that. So I don't know how people did it. I know I had to hand paint things, um, but with this, it just makes it a lot easier. So this actually, it's really cool. And this is, this is doing artistic liberty, but I, I kind of want to see what it looks like if it's a little hint of yellow in there. Let's see. Now, obviously that eats up more than, let's say we didn't want that. We can go back, take out that, take it out. And so that way it only affects the corners. Or another thing, maybe, yeah, maybe you just wanted to affect the corners so you could change the settings in here so it doesn't affect the inside the in internal area of the uh, yeah because like right now
Hmm. It's also very interesting how there's white in between there. It's not good. Change the height, maybe. So it's like accentuating the borderline of each when the pattern gets repeated. I don't want that to happen. So I guess the only way to get away with it, I could fix it, try to fix it, or I can just leave it like that. So I can go to micro height intensity, I think. So let's move that would work. There we go. Yeah, um, anchor points are really cool. I, 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 I don't think me people don't really talk about them that much, but they're super useful. It's funny how I was like thinking of adding the wear level was gonna affect like the the chipped areas, but then I, <laughs> basically this is this is like a detail wear. It's not necessarily the the overall did however make the roughness a little bit more interesting so this is now this is this is before Oh, there we go. Okay, I've just brought up the word contrast, so maybe that just makes it a little bit more, um, just, just harsher. But yeah, I don't know if you can see, so the knurling pattern, it has a, it's repeated, and the way that it, it is, you can actually see the repeated horizontal vertical lines that are going through so I can't I have to be careful with pushing it too much on that I noticed maybe it's something else I'm not sure it might might be the way that I have the I think I put a histogram node I, I'm thinking in my head like what did I do okay I think this is pretty cool Uh, or back in ye olden days. Are you going to put it into a marmoset viewer when posting our station so that people will be able to retain things back? Actually, I, that's one of my goals with this. I have marmoset finally. I bought it this year. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do that for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to still want to fix the safety. I don't like the way it looks. And uh, actually, um, what I want to do too is take out the 
I don't want to affect the knurling. I just want to affect the the shape of the object. Heard Barbara said pretty good to bake the texture maps in. Let's see. Planet, so I don't know. <laughs> I actually haven't baked in a marmoset. I heard it was really good, but I actually forgot about. I forgot that it was a. You can bake in it. So, um, Hashko, do you bring your assets into an engine at all, or do you uh, do you just do um, like rendering in, in Marmoset? It's taking a while. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna get we're gonna get the the edgeware that we were talking about before. That looks cool. And we're probably going to make it a little bit more subtle, too. And this is actually, uh, this is this is going a little further than, than the reference. But this is what's great about making art, is then you start saying, okay, well, you see the realism, and now you can try to push it. Oh, another thing is, um, I think the barrel and the mag need to be darker. Okay, that might I might have pushed it too much. That's cool though. Artistic liberties. Yeah. Hells yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm. Oh yeah, I love that feature where you can sort of uh, group and dictate where the the parts, which parts bake to which parts. Yeah, this is yeah, this is kind of like an over exaggeration, but it does look cool. The wood doesn't really do that, but it looks nice. I don't know, what do you think? Should I keep it? Or maybe I'll just bring it down a little bit. 
of the contrast. Add some more grunge. Add some scratches, maybe. How does the other side look? Actually looks pretty good. I like it. Keep going past the ID map. Okay, what I need to start doing is combining some of the details. So, uh, what I want to do is dirt can stay there, badge, hole, and markings. It's important if you're going to group things to, to make it easier to see, make sure that you view it and you see if um, it changes anything. So I'm going to try to group these three. Markings, the holes. Badge details. And then actually, I'm going to grab a simple material. I'll grab the steel. And what I'm going to do is once that goes back to normal. I'm going to grab the steel texture and I'll mask this little part on the right side be behind the trigger that uh, where there's the screw or like a little, it looks like a little wrench area. Uh, I want to make that dark along with the, let's see. Okay, I just did, I just did the same thing. see. Aha, I have dark secondary in here. What's that? Ah, that's right. Okay, so that's that's the edge wear. Yeah, that trigger is looking more and more intense. Never noticed that before. Okay, so steel, rust, steel. Okay, I'm just going to grab the steel rust. Add a black mask. And then add paint. So I have to actually have to hand paint this area.
cool. I'm gonna check out that uh, the Marmoset uh, tutorial that Hashcode provided. If Chrome responds. Grab a brush, basic hard brush. All right. Just waiting for the uh, waiting for Substance Painter to update. Again, working with in, in 4K uh, since I'm gonna get this gun to portfolio state, or I wanted to use it for my portfolio. So typically, you wait till the end to do this, and I would say yeah, I'm pretty much close to the end. Some other tutorials when you Google. Be more in depth, but for starts, this one's good. Cool. I wonder if they might have something for a Black Friday. And uh, then you can see if you can. Or like, uh, yeah, during the holidays. I, Marmoset was almost 50% off uh, earlier this year, is when I bought it. What is going on here? Yeah, I know it's it is weird. Substance Painter is that does that too. They sell on Twi on on Steam. All right, it's a, almost done. Really don't know what we're waiting for. I added steel to the. Oh, hey, look at that. Where did that come from? Looks good. Looks good, but I didn't put that there. Ah, oh, that's the rustware. Okay, there's a couple of ways to do this, and I realize I probably didn't want to go this way out. I suppose I could change. Okay, never mind. I'm good. Okay, now it's working. Where's Python console here? There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm painting all the parts that I think should be a dark metal. Just to break it apart, or just to break the, the material. Apart. Up. Up, not apart. Swear when things lag, my brain lags. There we go. 
it's a very tiny detail, but it definitely does something. And then uh, I'm going to go into create another paint. And I think I'm just going to fill this entire barrel. Let's see how this looks. And the reason I was like, I don't know if I set it up right, because I don't want it to look old. Actually, I don't want any of that. What happened? There we go. Uh, I love how the chat is active. I'm I'm having to like go back and make sure I don't miss anything. You can purchase Blender on Steam. Wow, that's cool. Oh, that's actually a good idea. I love like logging. I love the fact when I, I love the 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 whole feature of being able to see how long you spent playing a game down to the even down to the minute um, that would be really cool to see uh, with software of course in alpha beta for better years I'm probably missing a solid 10 out of thank you very much appreciate the uh, birthday wishes brain like brain <laughs> I'd be real worried when you get brain blue screen oh god no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I don't want this. I don't like this material. I want to change it. Actually. I just want the color. There we go. Yeah, I think the wood I might I need to spend time experiment, experimenting with it because I want to push it, but I don't want to push it the wrong way. It's, uh, it's difficult. I might need to look at real worn wooden panels on weapons because right now I'm only looking at M1911s and it probably could use like some scratches I guess still rust and wear
I'm toning down the rust a little bit. I want it to be used. That's the thing. Like I want it to be look. I want it to look worn. I don't want it to look like post-apocalyptic. And believe it or not, these these guns are very durable and resilient. It takes a lot for them to officially see. Uh, it takes a lot for their imperfections to officially show. Um, so um, yeah, I'm trying not to go all out too heavy-handed on the on all of that, like the dirt and grime and stuff. So for now we're good. I'm starting to get an idea of like what the wood could look like. Um, I also don't want to push it too much um, because I wanted to do this off the stream, even though it might, might be good. Um, I wanted to see if basically, I don't know if you can, tell but um with the knurling the, the knurling is etched into the knurling is etched into the wood panel right you have the wood panel and then you have the knurling so rather than the high points being raised off the surface like the diamond the the tops of the knurl pattern it's rather like you're sketching into the surface the way that i had made this originally was that you have the panel and then you have the raised surface of the neural. The problem is when you get into wear, uh, that's going to catch up on you because you have to fix that. Um, so what I, I have to, and, and it's also like the height. So right now the, the diamond parts, like the, the tip, the tip points are white. And then the Let's see, I can actually show you. Yeah, so it's white and then it, it recesses in, it's black. What I need to do is make the those recessed areas black, keep them black. And the, the fadedness, like the, the, fa the faded area it actually needs to be, I think, gray, right? Let me see if I if I understand correctly here, because I was just I was just playing with this on my own, and it looks like it looks like basically the worn area is higher than the recess points, and the recess points are supposed to look. I guess this looks better since I put that. Since I put that wear in, it does kind of look better. But if I took it out, it doesn't look as as good. Let me see. Wear copy. And plus, yeah, wood doesn't normally do that. So I have to look at that. Maybe get some reference for it. Whoa, wait, is it just me or does the top and bottom here look different? Yeah, they're different. Let me fix that. I don't know what part that did that. we go That's a, I think the woods a tricky tricky one because it's not obviously not plastic but it's not it's not metal it's not rubber so you need to make it look like that Let's see. Still can't model a damn pistol crib though. 
You'll do it, Hellforge. One day you'll do it. Or you've already done it, and you just don't know. Let's, uh, we can go see. I saved just in case it crashes. Yeah, I think uh, Hellforge is a little too hard on himself sometimes. Yeah, I think the, the pistol grip uh, shape is difficult. Like, I, I tell Hellforge, too, it's a, it's a mix between organic and hard surface, depending on the, on the, on the pistol grip. Because some, like, even, like, this weapon is it's a challenge because it's a mix. It's not, like, 100% hard surface. This has some really organic shapes, very um, distinct curves. Let's see what's happening here. It's a typically hard shape. Totally, that if you have to spend a couple hours, that's you know that's totally understandable. It's actually done. It's not metal enough to be brittle. <laughs> Gotta love the metal puns. It's like the uh, the environment team rocks, and the uh, the vehicle team is just all metal. Try and think of other other puns. So I'm I'm loading it. Let's see. I'm sh seeing if if it's gonna actually show that badly the trigger area. But at least we were able to bring in. Let's see. What's going on here? Why is it blurry? There we go. I think. Okay. Well, what was I? What was I actually gonna do? I was gonna mention something. Um, but this is taking a while, and it's go getting blurry. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'll stop right here, and uh, I'll try this out. Oh yeah, I was gonna check out Maya while that was rendering. And finally, it's showing. But yeah, at least we got to see it in Maya, to see how it looks. Um, I guess the three places that I, I, I care about how it looks is uh, Substance Iray, because I, I do like rendering in, in Substance Painter, uh, in Marmoset, and Unreal. So if it looks good in those places, then I guess that it's all that matters. But I have to say, the 4K is looking great. And the rust is just overpowering. So uh, I did clean up some rust in here and uh, probably change like, the, the color of the dirt or add another layer of dirt that is not orangey. Maybe it's more of like a uh, like black like soot and grime, and that way it balances it out a little bit. Because right now it's going, it's leaning towards just orange, and we don't really want that. So I'll save, uh, save Maya. Continue. Close that out. And what what's going on here? It's still, still really blurry. I even have post effects turned off. So I'm not sure what's happening. Very 
very bizarre. Okay, this is it's going to take a while. <laughs> Curves are uh could be very difficult to handle. Especially if they rely on being in the right place, for sure. The team just keeps rolling on. <laughs> the US had enough orange for four years. We have to render time super low. Um yeah, I don't know. Now, now it looks good. Okay, so here I can tell the trigger is like really bad looking. Also, I accidentally mirrored my my stroke on the dark metal, so I have to fix that. Actually, I'm going to save this out. Save render. Okay. Uh, call this bake. Bake O one. All right. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad that um. I'm glad that he's not going to be reelected. Looks like it only renders for for 10 seconds. Whoa! Hey, Brian. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thanks for joining. I'm trying to get, like, good render. Or just, like, troubleshooting. But the, uh... I don't know. It's a couple, couple things that, that I'm running into. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the weapon that I've been working on. Let me take a look. Have some exploded views here, so you can see it really up close. Holy crap! Right. I would have I would have shown this on Thursday, but I didn't have anything up. Yeah, the trigger guard doesn't oops the trigger guard doesn't look so bad again if you're not looking for it there we go maybe if I bring it into something else too it looks nicer Thank you. Yeah, I um, I actually still didn't get too much into like the the storytelling aspect of it, um, but I'm glad you you picked up on the those small details. And I just raised it to 4K, so it's a 4K texture. It was 2K earlier. Okay, good, good, uh, good idea. I'll definitely do that next time. I'm gonna end soon too, um, but I'll definitely post it for next time and see if anybody wants to join and and hang out. All right. I think we're. I think we're set for the day thanks everyone for tuning in for um sharing advice in ideas hearing thoughts on things happening today and uh yeah 
Just everybody take it easy. Try to post, I'll try to post some of the stuff in my Discord as well. I actually really like that. Yeah, thanks, Hellforge. Thanks, uh, Brain Drain. Have a good one. Stay safe. And um, we did it. We did it. We got our new president, Biden. Woo! So, uh, yeah, celebrate. This is this is one for the history books right now. Everyone, take it easy. Oh, that's so sweet. Thanks. See ya.